Cordero Patterson want a career in media? <laughs> nah. <laughs> Just check it. I think, I, I think I'm good right where I'm at right now. You think you're good? Y'all hiring? Mm, you know that answer. Hey, I'm always open for, you know what I'm saying, a new job opportunity. <laughs> you know, this offseason, I might, might go take some lit classes or something. You're a bit canceled for that. I'll crush it. How was it? You've had very few games where you've had Russ and Calvin and Kyle and everybody healthy at the same time. Uh, what was that experience like and how dangerous uh, does that make you guys when everybody's up? With you? Honestly, it was amazing. You know, seeing, you know, Reed and uh, Russ coming back, you know, first game back, both of them scored a touchdown, you know, and seeing the things Kyle doing, you know, week after week, you know, it's, it was just a matter of time, you know, he built that confidence up and, you know, he done got it and we just hope he continue to to just ball like we know he can ball. I saw a couple weeks ago, I think you talked to PFF and you said you got fined for cleats. Has that been resolved? <laughs> they find me every week, man. It's really? not it's not a week go by they don't send my H in the letter about some. My skin showing too much or my knee pads not this or socks too long, socks this color, just it's always something. How much have you paid in fines? <laughs> That's unclosure, man. You can't, you can't, can't talk about that. <laughs> Gotta talk about that off the books, man. <laughs> um, when did the, you know, you, we've seen it a few times. You throw passes to fans. When did that start for you? I've been doing that since Minnesota. So I can say my whole career, I've been doing it. What, like, not every player does that. You know, very rare you see. That, that seems almost more of like a baseball thing. You know, Is, you know, how did that start for you? What did you honestly? It's, those guys and girls and kids and you know everybody coming out, you know spending they they hard earned money to you know come watch us play. So I think it, you know why, why should not you know interact with those fans you know and just to play with them you know it's probably somebody first game or probably somebody last game. So you know just trying to make a difference out of one person in the stands you know and it, it goes a long way. You know people always tweet me you know saying they caught a ball from me and. You know, after every time I throw it, I always get a ball to somebody. So, you know, it's just, it just feel good to do something like that. Do you remember the first game you did it? Was it that, was it, it wasn't your rookie year? Like, was it your rookie year or your second year? Like, I don't know. It's been, I know I've been doing this in Minnesota. Like, so. you, you remember that first reaction in the first game, though? Because, you know, like I said, not, not my fans do that, at least with the regularity you do. I don't know. It's been a long time, man. I'm old now, so my memory is a little shot right now. Is there one Every week, every, every every week, you know, home or away games, you know, I always do it, no matter where I'm at, London. Right. And I did it down when I, I played in Mexico, so no matter where we're at, I'm, I'm going to do it. Well, I mean, is there one, like, interaction that's been, that's No, been I say every week. Yeah. Every week I do it. It's, it's a blessing. Bro, you're, you're almost at, you're, you have the second most yards from scrimmage in your career through the first two. <laughs> It just feel like it, it feel like I haven't been doing enough, you know, those, those last past eight years, you know, and this year, you know, every year is a blessing. You know, we know football don't last long, so, you know, every year it's a blessing to come out here and just to showcase myself, you know, just to show, you know, the team, what I can do to try to help this team win. And, you know, every time my numbers call, I just try to go out there and make a play. When you said that you feel like you haven't been necessarily doing enough the last eight years, like is there a point that you re this season that you realize that being like, wow, well, maybe there was – Nah, like I said, these last eight years, you know, I, I just ain't did enough. This year, you know, like like you say, like Chris said, I'm on pace to whatever, whatever the hell he said. <laughs> but, but like I said, I wasn't doing enough. This year, no, nah, I guess I'm I'm doing enough. So I'm just trying to do what I'm supposed to do, man. That's it. Is there a moment where you realize, that, maybe not that, but that you realize, wow, I'm getting so much more in a way that I make me feel more comfortable? Every time I step on the field, I feel comfortable, honestly. I mean, you know, coach, coach won't put you out there if he don't trust you. And, and you know, and I, I just, and it all starts here at practice, you know, and, you know, just trying to build that confidence up each and every day, you know, at practice. You know, it starts here first, and, you know, Sunday is just, just going out there and just balling out. I know you're pretty, pretty confident, like you just said, but was there ever a point, a low point in your career where, where your confidence wavered at all? Honestly, probably not. You know, I, I know what I can do. You know, that, that's just something I done, I done had since I was younger. My confidence level been above the roof, man, and nobody can ever take that away from me, you know. And 
you know, when things don't go as, as planned, you know, my confidence is still at its all-time high because I know what I can do when I get my opportunity. How have you and Mike become so close? Like, why? Y'all seem like you and I don't want to say inseparable, but y'all got really close. Mike Badal, man, he was in Chicago with me, so, you know, and I, he went to South Carolina, you know, you just know him through other people, and, you know, this lead, is, this NFL is small, man, and everybody's just become friends, you know, no matter how much they beef on, on Sundays, you know, after the game and off season, you know, most of the guys train together, so. You ever no, train with him in the off season? I never train with Mike. Okay, oh, yeah, I was always sure if that relationship is, like, ever extended there. Like, but, I know we talked about TV shows, but I could see a CP and Mike Davis podcast, you know, <laughs> I don't think people could keep up with that kind of little podcast. Would you cut your hair off too? No, hell no. Heck no, sorry. I ain't cutting my hair for nobody. <laughs> Has Mike uh, gone conspir- all conspiracy theory on you yet? What do you mean? Like, because he was tweeting for a while. He's kind of calmed down a bit, but for a while he was just tweeting like conspiracy theories about like dude. Mike is just Mike, man. Mike, I told him I need to unfollow him on Twitter because he's always tweeting something. Right. You know, and, Every time I look on Twitter, Mike Davis, Mike Davis, Mike Davis. I'm like, yeah, I got to stay on Twitter because Mike's saying something or doing something, always. <laughs> Honestly, I've been doing that for like seven years. I just say it after everything, on, only on Instagram doing it. And I, I don't know why. I just started doing it. I, I can't not do it because sometimes I slip and don't say it. And, Everybody flooded my damn Hey, I, I finally got you not saying and stuff like that. Then I had to go in that post and delete the whole post. So, <laughs> so I just try to make sure I do not miss that. Does it become part of your brand now? That's me. I try to get a trademark, but they wouldn't let me. Really? Trademarks are tricky now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when, when you look at kind of how you've been running the ball, is this do you think the best you've run the ball in your career? I run the ball fast and hard every time I get the ball. I mean, there ain't no best, there ain't no worse. I mean, when I, my number's called, I'm going to go out there and try to lay the hammer to somebody. So that's just something I do each and every game, every year. So my opportunity come, I go out and make, present it. This might be a little bit of an off-the-wall question, but you pay attention. Just how much you maybe going to pay attention to what happens with Kevin Hester in the Hall of Fame? I mean, <laughs> he's going to make the Hall of Fame. I mean, that's not my call, man. We all see what he did. I mean, that's, that's just self-explanatory. So, you know, I mean, I can't can't really speak on that because I'm not Devin Hester. But, right. you know, I feel like he should be in the Hall of Fame. That's all I have to say about that. Well, the reason I ask that is because if he gets in, that potentially opens the gateway for you. I mean, I'm not worried about that. I mean, I'm still playing football right now. <laughs> I'm just trying to focus on this season, man, and, you know, getting to the playoffs and all that stuff. I ain't worried about no Hall of Fame for me. None of that. Because, I mean, but you, you understand what I'm getting at. Man. From a returner point of view, there hasn't really been that type of guy. Hey, man. Like I say, I hope Devin get in, which he will get in. So.